that report came out about a week ago, and it really got a lot of people talking. And um, your thoughts on that report? Well, I was disappointed by the report for a few reasons. Uh, the one was the fact that they repeatedly quoted ANC policy documents. Exco, give it to you. Fuck, wait for you to get it on your own. Exco, deliver to you. Knock, knock, open up the door to spread it. But the non stop. But I think one of the overarching problems for me was it's, it's called implicit bias. It's when you, when you make an argument without providing the evidence or the data in the assumption that the data would prove you right. Mm -hmm. And the data is out and the data is proving them wrong. <laughs> be done to address inequality or what can we do mm. and the assumption is that that which we have been trying to do which have which has resulted in a, a, a worsening of the problem must just be done more aggressively and now somehow doing a so there was a half-baked implementation of a, a proposed solution that resulted in a half-baked failure now we need to aggressively implement that and there's no explanation how that would not lead to an aggressive failure that the vast majority of South Africa that is living in poverty is black and the least amount of people living in poverty is white. Yes, yeah, certainly. And that speaks to white privilege, does it not? No, it doesn't. How does Why it speak not? to white privilege? Well, I can tell you how, why it's not speaking to white privilege. Uh, there are a variety of reasons and, and I think part of the problem is this idea of, of cultural relativism which, which implies that if different people do things in different ways the result will always be the same. And if the result is not the same, it's because the one has necessarily oppressed the other. There's a big variety of problems in South Africa. Um, but those aren't looked at. Uh, mm. Because the problem and the reason why they aren't looked at is because these, these white privileged activists, it appears, I want to say the majority of them, but at least those who are most vocal, um, are driven more by their envy or perhaps even their hatred for the haves than, than their, their compassion for the have-nots. So when they see lines of inequality and they see white people have, have a lower level of, of, um, of unemployment, they are more angry about the fact that white people have more jobs than they are angry about the fact that black people have less jobs. And the question is how do we solve that? The question that should be solved by fixi fixing these things that I've mentioned. Instead of that, the proposed solution Ah, uh, when I switch lanes, then them doors swing. All I'm at the window screaming money in the thing. Call it automatic bang, bang. I cannot bang. say that uh, generations of white South Africans that have come after apartheid came to an end did not benefit from the many benefits that they, their parents, their grandparents, and their great grandparents had from that system that was put in well, place. Well, I was everywhere I've been in my life, I've been outperformed by black people uh, in, in primary school, in high school, at because university. Because they were finally given a fair chance and a fair opportunity. Can't none of y'all niggas fuck with none of these niggas, these triggers, these killers sitting on the porch in between talk about apartheid then we've been very vocal about our criticism on apartheid and and we should be and we should continue to do so but the assumption is somehow that that uh, if there wouldn't have been apartheid again this comes back to cultural relativism if there wouldn't have been apartheid that's the only explanation for black people living in poverty as if, if apartheid never existed black people would have all been rich and white and there would have been perfect equality there's no evidence that that would have been the case why am I saying this because there are many countries or there are countries in the world that have never been colonized that have never been oppressed by anyone and those countries are the poorest countries in the world poorer than black people in South Africa are today this the type of shit that we grew up on the type of shit that killers play in they whip so loud when shit's about to go down so lanes get the fuck off animals on the loose White privilege is very simple. It's a set of unearned privileges that come to you simply because you're white. Like what? If I go to school, for example, if my children or grandchildren go to school, they're very likely to see characters in books that look like them. That doesn't That's happen for true. black children. That's and not true. Would you give That's her a chance? Can I, it is not blatantly false. I went to school m much more recently than you did. I looked, uh, there were pictures of black children. Oh, bitch, get out the way. Get out the way, bitch, get out the way. Oh, bitch, get out the way. Get out the way, bitch.
those privileges we have that are unearned. I can tell you, Marcel, that if Ernst and um, a black person went in for an interview for a job, mm. there would be an assumption, just looking at Ernst, that he is competent. He doesn't have to... I don't no, no, fuck you with don't. you. You little stupid ass bitch, I ain't fucking with you. You little, you little dumb. Alice, would you disagree with that? Yes, I do. Well, firstly, the point I was trying to make that it is more probable that a white person would be more competent for a particular job because white people generally have better access to education. And I know you're smirking because you're thinking I'm trying to make a very racist uh, statement. Sorry, explain to I'm yourself. not. The point that I've made earlier that the majority of black people, black children in this country, go to schools where firstly they don't understand the language that is being taught to them when they go to grade one. Secondly, it's schools that are, that are not properly uh, managed. Uh, that's, and that's, I'm just quoting stats South Africa. So. That's firstly. Secondly, yes, it's true that, that on top management level there are more white people than and black people. Yes, and, and senior management and middle management, management. Yes, which is, I think, less than 1% of the population of South Africa, so we need to look at the bigger picture. This is the type of shit that we grew up on, the type of shit that killers play, and they whip so loud, when shit's about to go down, so lanes get the fuck off, animals on the loose. I think the problem, and I've been admitting it since the beginning of this interview, every time I've spoken, the only thing but that I've said... But they first have to admit that th this is the issue. The first step is admitting that there is a problem. And you're saying that white privilege is not an, an I'm issue. No, it's not. Because it's not... It's the fact that, that 9 out of 10 black babies in this country are born in a house with both of their parents, as opposed to 1 in 3 black babies. Don't blame white people for that. You don't want to fuck with me. Got the police watching that. I would disagree. I, I would frame it differently. It's not that government hasn't done enough. Government has done too much. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. A young nigga got it.